All right, so we talked about how you could fill out a before and after grid for a product, you know, in particular a physical product. Remember, we had our warm, squishy tub. Um, I wanted to give you another example for how I do this if I had a service-based business. So thinking about one that, you know, pretty much all of us can relate to and one that, like I said, it seems sort of like a you know, infant bathing tub, one that's maybe a little innocuous. I thought about a landscaper, right? Someone who just mows lawns. So let's go back through. I'm still going to leave these examples up so you can see it, but let's go back through and just kind of talk through how you would fill this out if you were a landscaper or if you were doing this for a landscaper, you know, a mowing company of, of some sort. So number one, what do you have? Before you have tall grass, you have weeds, maybe you got dead grass. After you have a beautiful lush green lawn, right? Before, after, what do you have, what don't you have? You know, that is totally weed-free. So lush, green, weed-free lawn is what I would put into here. Um, how do you feel? Now, oh, I should, go, I should go back and say, who's my before? Who's my before? Now, in this case, it might be a man, right? Maybe it's a man that makes the decision. I know in my, in my home, I was the one that said, I do not want to mow the lawn, I'm gonna get a lawn service, right? I'm sure in plenty of other cases, um, it might be a woman. Let's say now, just for the sake of argument, that, that it's a man. So I'm going to picture in my mind a man in his, you know, probably 35 to 45 years old. Okay? That's, that's who I'm going to picture. Someone who's old enough to have a lawn, but not necessarily old enough to have kids who are old enough to mow the lawn for him. Okay? So that's, that's my dad, right? That's the guy. That's my dad. That's my avatar. All right. So how do they feel? How does dad feel? Well, maybe... You know, when he walks out into his lawn, he feels a little bit, you know, embarrassed, might even feel a little bit frustrated, might be annoyed that this is how I have to, send, to spend my Saturday, right? So feels, might even feel tired. You know, how do you feel uh, when someone else is mowing your lawn? I mean, you feel, you feel pretty great, right? You feel, you feel confident because you're not the one who has to mow your lawn. You know, you don't feel... Um, you're not stressed out because you get to enjoy your Saturday instead of having to wake up early, you know, and, and get all that done, right? So that's feel. Now, average day. Average day is where we can come up with a little bit of magic because anybody who's, you know, had to mow their own lawn, you know what the average day is like when you have to mow your lawn, right? You wake up early because you want to get it done before it gets too hot. You go out to your garage and you go to do the, the pole, thing on the lawnmower, but the dang thing's out of gas, so you go to fill it up with gas, but what's wrong with, with you know, what problem then comes up next? Mm, no gas in the gas tank, right? So then you gotta put the gas tank in the car, drive to the gas station, fill up the thing, now you put, you know, gas in your mower, you're finally ready to get going. Of course, by this point, the sun is up and, you know, scorching, right? So you get it going, you mow your lawn, you weed it, you clean everything up, and then you take a shower, you flop down on the couch, and basically, Saturday is gone. Saturday is gone. So before, your average Saturday is wasted doing something you don't want to do. Now, after, you wake up when you want to wake up. Hey, it's Saturday. Sleep in if you want to, because someone else is going to be taking care of that grass. All right, so you sleep in, you come out. Heck, maybe they're coming out mowing the lawn while you're at work. So on your Saturday, when everybody else is, you're enjoying your nice, lush, weed-free green lawn in a hammock, you know, sipping on a drink with a little, you know, umbrella thingy in it, looking over at your buddies when, you know, they're having to slug out their lawnmower and, and push that thing all around their yard. You're just getting to kick it, right? So now think about what we've just done here, right? As a landscaper, you're not just somebody who cuts grass. You're not just somebody who takes lawns from being, you know, funky and green. And this is what landscapers do. Like, we're going to take your lawn and we're going to make it look nice. Yeah, they all say that. They all say that. But you know what none of them say? We're going to give you your Saturdays back. Now what just happened? The, the continuum, the before and after continuum, when it's before you have ugly grass with weeds and after you have really nice grass, that's something. That's valuable. That's the reason people pay for it. But when the continuum is before you don't have Saturday, and that's kind of like your day. Before you don't have Saturday, after you have more Saturdays, what is that worth? How valuable is a Saturday? You only get around 50 a year, right? We're only getting 50, 52 Saturdays a year, every year. So how valuable is it to get some of those back? It's extremely valuable, right? So do you see how the idea, and we wouldn't have come up with that had we not thought about average day. And by the way, if I were going to sell and produce a sales message for a landscaping company, you better believe I would describe 
the before state, how miserable that is, because anybody who's ever mowed a lawn, they've had that experience. We get our narrative from shared experience. All right, so I go and I describe that, and I describe what it could be. Okay, now what about status? All right, before we had the mom who was unappreciated and went from unappreciated mom to super mom. But can a landscaping company change the status of a man? Heck yeah, you bet. Number one, having a lush green lawn in many neighborhoods can make you the admiration of your neighbors. You know, wow, what are you doing? Your lawn looks great, right? This is something that I guess people care about. So that's a big part of it. So before you're just some ordinary schlub, afterwards, you're the guy with the beautiful lawn, right? You know, you're out there, people walk by and like, wow, your lawn looks great. That's a biggie. But what's even bigger is going back to the average day when your neighbor's the one who's mowing their grass and you're the one kicked back and relaxing. Now you're balling, right? You're balling on a budget because you get to kick back in your hammock and you've got your Saturday and they don't, right? So you, you know, when it comes to keeping up with the Joneses, you're the Joneses, right? That is what a landscaping company can deliver. And this status part down here is so incredibly critical. Napoleon Bonaparte said, I've made the most wonderful discovery. Men will fight long and hard, even die for a bit of colored ribbon. What Napoleon was saying there is that status is everything. And if you can change someone's status, right? If you can change someone's status, if you can change their status in, in, in the messaging, in, in the way, you don't even have to change the product, right? We're still just cutting grass. We're still just cutting grass. It's still just a, a soft, squishy infant tub. The product hasn't changed. The messaging has changed and the messaging now delivers status. The message delivers lots of bits of colored ribbon. And if you can bring that in, not only will you see your conversion rates go up, you'll see your referrals go up, you'll, you'll see your stick rates go up, and you'll see your reorders go up. Because you're not just giving someone something that they, oh, now I have this and I didn't have it before. You're actually changing who they are and how they feel about themselves. You've widened the value continuum so people will pay a lot more for that. All right? Status is big. Try to see where you can incorporate it in. All right. So once you've identified your market's ideal after, you can craft your statement of value. And this is big. Statement of value is a big, big part of what we do in this process. And that's exactly what we're going to get to in the next video.